black holes, the monsters of our universe, the most fascinating and strangest objects in space, these cosmic giants engulf planets and stars. The gravitational pull is so strong that even light cannot escape. A black hole is basically a region in space-time where the gravity is so strong that nothing can escape. But black holes are even more bizarre than we think. Professor Brian Greene explains the mysteries and hidden nature of black holes. work over the last 20 years has established that when you have a black hole, actually even more general systems, but talk about a black hole, there's an alternate description of a black hole in terms of what's known as the holographic description. It's as if there's a two-dimensional world that surrounds any given three-dimensional world that has exactly the same physics as the three-dimensional world that we're familiar with, and yet it describes it in a completely different language. So a black hole gravity is obviously essential. That's how a black hole forms. But in this dictionary that physicists have developed, there's a description of a black hole that doesn't involve gravity, only involves quantum mechanics. The current black hole model is based on the collapse of a star's internal matter to a state of infinite density. We call it singularity. Our current thinking about a black hole is that there has to be a singularity inside it. A singularity is a point of infinite density and infinite curvature of space-time. But this concept is recognized as an untenable condition that violates the basic concepts of physics. We don't have any physics to describe singularity. The second problem with black holes is the information paradox. If something falls into a black hole and is destroyed, the information about its state is also lost. This also is not permitted by physics as we know it. So scientists are now using quantum mechanics to describe black holes. Oftentimes people think about black holes as these gargantuan structures that form from collapsed stars. There's a big one in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, it weighs four million times out of the sun. The photograph of a black hole in the galaxy M87 that got the world excited a couple of years back, 55 million light years away, billions of times the mass of the sun. But the reality is anything, if you compress it enough, becomes a black hole. If you take an orange and you squash an orange down sufficiently small, according to Einstein, it becomes a black hole. So these things don't have to be gargantuan. The flip side of it is, we also typically have an intuition that black holes are really dense, right? That's usually the way we think about them. But if you make something sufficiently large, regardless of how low its density is, it will also become a black hole. So you can make a black hole out of air by just having enough air. If you have enough air, sufficiently large sphere of air, it would become a black hole too, with the density of air. So all the intuitions that we typically have about black holes, that they have to be dense and they have to be gargantuan, not right. When you look at Einstein's equations, right in his mathematics, there's a little formula that you can see where it says, if you have any mass M, whatever mass you want, and you squeeze it into a radius R, that's less than two times Newton's constant, 2g times m divided by c squared, speed of light squared, a formula, details don't matter. But you take any mass, if the radius within which that mass sits is less than 2gm over c squared, it is a black hole, period, end of story, according to Einstein. Now Einstein left out quantum mechanics. Weirdly, right? Because his Nobel Prize was for quantum mechanics. It was for a paper he wrote in 1905 about the photoelectric effect, but he never, really believed that quantum mechanics was the true description of the world. And when he was developing the general theory of relativity, he was just thinking about gravity and not quantum mechanics. Stephen Hawking came along in 1974 and started to inject quantum mechanics into our understanding of things like black holes. And that's where Hawking proved that black holes are not completely black. 
He showed that black holes allow a certain amount of radiation to leak out of their surface, leak out of the event horizon, or leak out from just beyond the edge of the event horizon. And so, yes, when you think about black holes, as far as we can tell, they are a fundamental quality of the world, but you have to include quantum physics to truly understand them, and that's the cutting edge of what's happening right now. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey did a wonderful study of a vast number of galaxies. And I've seen these wonderful images where they put like a little red circle around all those galaxies that have a black hole in their center. And there are red circles all over that imagery. So it seems to be a ubiquitous quality that black holes are at the center of galaxies. And those are typically gargantuan black holes, millions or billions of times the mass of the sun. You know, there's still a lot of uncertainty about galactic formation. You know, some have suggested that early stars, which were quite large compared to more modern stars, when they exhausted their nuclear fuel and they collapsed in on each other, they created black holes that were large, and then they continued to suck in more material from the environment, and they grew larger and larger still. So that's sort of one rough way that people think about how these massive, enormous black holes may have formed, but it's uncertain. LIGO, you know, this laser interferometer gravitational wave observatory, gravitational waves, it, it took headlines a few years ago when it detected the first ripples in the fabric of space. It detected them from two black holes that were 1.4 billion light years away, like 1.4 billion years ago, rotating around each other, going near the speed of light, slamming into each other, creating a tidal wave in the fabric of space that rippled outward at the speed of light. Part of it raced toward planet Earth. There wasn't anybody on planet Earth to see it at that moment, but it had 1.4 billion year journey to traverse. It raced toward planet Earth. When it's about 100,000 light years away, it grazes the Milky Way galaxy, it continues to race toward Earth. When it's 100 light years away, a guy named Albert Einstein writes down equations that suggest there could be these gravitational waves unknown that when it's already racing toward the planet, right? And it continues to race onward two light days. It's two light days away when they turn on the newly refined version of the LIGO detector. And two days later, that wave rolls by. Planet Earth shakes the two detectors, one in Louisiana, the other in Washington State, giving us the first direct detection of ripples in the fabric of space and establishing that the story that I told you is true. That ripple in the fabric of space was the most direct evidence that black holes are real because when you took the way that the machine in Louisiana and Washington, it twitched for just you know a tiny fraction of a second, when you figured out using supercomputers what the cause of the wave must have been, you are led to two black holes that are 28 and 31 times the mass of the sun. 36 times the mass of the sun, numbers of that sort. And that was the only explanation for the data. And so there's this beautiful indirect proof that these stellar sized black holes are actually out there. And then of course we take a photograph of one in a nearby galaxy. Binary star systems are not uncommon, they're fairly common. Two stars will be orbiting around each other. If those two stars exhaust their nuclear fuel, they can each collapse to a black hole, so that's one possibility. Or it could be a black hole's wandering through and captures another black hole. It's a possibility too. Many people have in mind that black holes sort of reach out and grab everything in. But a black hole of mass M a black hole whose mass is the same as the sun has the same gravitational pull as the sun. It doesn't pull any harder than the sun. It's just that you can get closer to it because it's so small and therefore you can experience the gravity more strongly. But you know, a brick of mass M and a black hole of mass M, they exert the same gravitational pull. Anything with a mass can become a black hole if it is compressed infinitesimally. Our sun can also become a black hole if compressed to a radius of three kilometers. Our universe is a beautiful place. It contains everything we know about and everything we aspire to know about. There are an infinite number of secrets hidden inside the cosmos and we will surely uncover them.
As we move forward, 